Ivy Day in the committee room in Dubliners, a city campaign worker named Mr. O'Connor and a caretaker named Old Jack chat with each other while Mr. O'Connor waits for his candidate, Mr. Tierney, to arrive. Mr. Hines, another campaign worker, stops by to see if Mr. O'Connor has been mm -hmm. paid yet. Jack declares Mr. Tierney is better than his opponent, <laughs> Colgan. They argue about the various candidates, selling them out to the English. To make amends, Mr. Hines gestures to the ivy leaf pin on his jacket, a symbol of the fallen Irish home rule movement leader, Charles Parnell, and says if Parnell were still alive, there would be no question of a welcome address for the king. Mr. Henchy, another worker, arrives to announce there is no money tonight for them and checks in on Mr. O'Connor's work for the day. The men speculate how Mr. Tierney learned to be tricky. And Mr. Hines leaves, and the men gossip about groups and individuals in government who may also be untrustworthy. A delivery boy brings several bottles of stout, sent by Mr. Tierney. Mr. Lyons and Mr. Crofton arrive from canvassing and talk about the votes they've secured. The conversation turns back to the king's visit. Mr. Lyons declares neither the king nor Parnell have had the moral fiber to lead them. They open another bottle of stout, and Mr. Hines returns. The men convince Mr. Hines to read a poem he wrote about Parnell, and all the men applaud when he's finished. Ivy Day in the committee room stands out among the stories in Dubliners because of its focus on the political rather than the personal. Ivy Day is an Irish holiday commemorating the death of Home Rule leader Charles Stuart Parnell. The other stories in the collection make passing references to Irish nationalism and allusions to political figures and causes, but in this installment, the focus is less about a personal struggle to discover identity and more about larger issues of national direction and identity. Mr. Hines, a strident nationalist, fears Mr. Tierney will bow down to the king and offers him a welcome address, a move he considers tantamount to acceptance of English rule over the Irish people. The conflict in the room reflects a larger conflict surrounding the move for independence in general, the ideal of a free and independent Ireland versus the possible financial suffering that could come from cutting ties with the English government.